Thank you for joining Artabella as we take you step by step through Tucson's backyard. Let's go ahead and gather our supplies. First, we'll be needing a large brush, medium brush, as well as a small paintbrush. And then we'll be needing a paper towel to dry those brushes with and water to clean them with. Now, what colors are we gonna be using today? We need primary red, primary yellow, as well as primary blue. Now, it doesn't stop there. We're going to be mixing our red and yellow to create orange, as well as our yellow and blue to create green. And then we need four different tints of pink. So we've got one, two, three, and four. And I mixed a little bit of white into my red to do that. And then we need one of green and one of blue. Let's go ahead and create. So first off, I am taking my small detail brush in that little bit of yellow and just creating a nice cactus. Now when you create your cactus, you just wanna make sure that each additional cacti little branch is growing off the top of the cactus. Uh, and then on our left side, we're creating a different kind of cactus, like a nice fan. And then behind that, we're going to be building three tall, straight cactuses. And now I'm just adding in some mountain background for a little extra to it. And then I'll be putting a sun right in the center. And now I'm outlining the way that I wanted my sunset to lay. Because the original picture was very separated. You could see the just the difference in color and I really liked that. Um, so you can see I'm going in with my small detail brush in that light blue and just trying to maintain that separation, keep everything nice and clean. Um, with still getting a lot of blue up and around my sun. Now I'm going in with that same detail brush in my yellow, again, trying to keep everything as clean as possible keep as much blue out of the yellow as I can. And you'll see that I'm able to do this for that whole left side and then a little bit of this right side. Unfortunately, I didn't allow any dry time in between my layers. I just kind of kept going. Um, and doing that, I ended up mixing some of the blue into the yellow. Um, but I really liked the streak kind of effect that I got out of it. So you'll see here soon that I just go with it and I start mimicking that streaking throughout each of the little clouds. Now I do keep most of the sections pretty clean, but I do blend in that blue a little bit to give it more of a, a blend effect, I guess you could say. Now I'm just taking the very edges of the blue and moving those into the yellow a little bit. That way that blue chunk can still stay primarily blue. Um, and you'll be able to see that I do that better in the orange than in that blue section where you can see that I just take the edges um, and blend them out. Uh, so here we are at that orange section. I'm filling in the blanks in my sunset with the orange. Again, just pulling out from the sides and blending into that yellow a little bit just to get everything covered. Now I do pick up a little bit of yellow to just bring back that separation in between the two colors because I did still want a cleaner, sharper color. Um, so I do bring a little bit of the yellow back in there, but just depending on how you want your painting to look, whether you want it to be blended or you want those colors to have that nice separation, um, just depends on how much yellow that you would bring back into, how much blending that you would do originally. Uh, yeah, and all that fun stuff. 
So now I'm going to go ahead with that detail brush again with white with just a tad bit of yellow in it to fill in my sun. Now that's not 100% necessary. I myself prefer to have just a little bit of yellow in my suns instead of a flat white. So now I am taking the lightest of my pink colors and filling in the mountain on my right hand side. Now you'll see that it's not really that light in the camera and that's because I messed up. I put too much red into my white and ended up not as white as I would have preferred. Um, so a way to kind of just prevent that from happening is adding your red little bit by little bit into a lot of white. So if you're going for a very light tint of pink where it's just barely got any color to it, um, you want just the tiniest bit of red into a lot of white. And you can carry that into the rest of the colors as well if you wanted a really light blue. Just a little bit of that, that blue into your white. Now jumping back into the painting, I'm taking my medium sized brush and filling in the left hand mountain with my supposed to be second lightest color or second darkest color, I guess you could say. Um, and just filling everything in. Again, unfortunately, my color wasn't as light as I would have preferred it to be. There wasn't a whole lot of difference because I ran out of the white. Um, but I just, I just went with it. I wasn't too stressed about it. I just let it happen. So going in and filling in that third one, we want our third darkest pink. Uh, and just filling it in with that medium brush. Now I use the very edge of that of the brush to create sharper lines. So you just want to rake the entire edge of the brush across where you want the straight line and you'll get one that's pretty sharp, pretty clean. You just want to make sure that you don't overload your brush um, because if you do, you'll end up spreading that thick gunk of paint that you have and then you lose your straight line. You end up with bubbles, you end up with texture. Now texture is great if that's what you're going for. However, if you want a flat straight line, you just want to have the least amount of paint on it as possible. And then finishing off our backgrounds, just going in with that medium sized brush, the darkest pink that I have and filling it in. So now I'm going in with my lightened green with my at first medium brush and then I just I felt it was going to take too long so I go in with my larger brush and it just made things go by so much faster um, and I actually utilized the full brush to create the round edge to my cactus as you can see there um, I'm just kind of twirling the edge of my brush um, more of a wrist movement than a finger movement to create the rounded edge that I was going for. So again, using the large brush to fill everything in on those two main cactuses. And then I jump to the back cactus and use the medium sized brush because the large brush just wouldn't have been the same width as the cactus like the medium brush is and it made my life a lot easier just being able to rake it full down the width of the, the brush. that's nice and complete I'm gonna jump back over into that right cactus uh, and start finishing filling that in just filling in each of my cactuses to completion in this step 
Um, I will recommend utilizing your brush strokes. So what that, what I mean by that is using your brush strokes to show that a cactus is behind another cactus. So the way I did that was I created that the loop texture with my large brush for the front cactuses on that left hand side versus just going straight up with the medium brush for the ones behind it. And that created a difference in texture to highlight the difference in the way the cactuses are laying. Now, just to give a little bit of an oomph to my cactuses, I am going in with my light blue and my detail brush, and I'm going over just the edges of each canvas. It kind of makes it look as if it's a reflection from the sunset, and I really enjoyed that. So again, just going over the edges, um, and it's to your preference how much you would prefer to blend it in, how much you would prefer to have that line, as you can see the line. So jumping into yellow, again, I'm blending it a little bit more on one, but I do leave the, the lines more visible in others. Uh, and like I said, that's complete preference. You know, I kind of just, I, I mix blending and stark lines in one part of it. So why not continue to do that even with the lighting on the cactuses? Uh, and I'm bringing in a little bit of the orange Again, mimicking that sunset that I have um, so that it just kind of looks like a reflection. Now, the last step is, of course, adding the spines to our cactus. And I won't lie, that's part of, that's a lengthy bit, but it's worth it because it makes everything look that much more realistic in the end. Um, so I'm taking my small detail brush in my white and just quickly swooping upwards with the tip of my brush. And then I went and added a little bit of blue because mine was feeling very flat, um, the difference between my cactuses. And there we have it, pretty much. Let us know how you like the video. Comment down below, comment on our Facebook. Um, you know, just, just let us know how you like the video. Visit our websites. Yeah, have a good day.